Idan Ravin, a.k.a. the Hoops Whisperer. Kevin Durant was named the NBA's MVP yesterday. He's one of your many clients that you've worked with, along with Carmelo and LeBron and Kobe. What is it about your training program that attracts this level of talent to you? Um, first of all, I want to congratulate Kevin. He's earned every bit of this. Um, with respect to my training, um, I don't really know what other trainers do. I can only sort of speak to, my, to what I do. I try to create a sanctuary, a place where there are no mistakes. There's no such a thing, there's no such thing as a mistake. It's all mistakes. I want them to laugh. I want them to have fun. There's no criticism. There's no judgment. You feel good when you leave, and you feel great when you leave. And the only laughter you'll ever hear in there is from fun, not from criticism. And he was already great when he got to you. How did you raise his game to the next level? I think you have to see these players as if it was a Tour de France bicycle. So when you see a Tour de France bike and it's worth a million dollars, and you see a little speck of dirt on it, to the civilian eye you think, mm, that's just a little speck of dirt. But to these uber athletes, the best in the world, that little speck of dirt is .0004 seconds and it matters. So with these guys, what we try to do is refine and make them more streamlined and more efficient. So if it takes you 12 dribbles to get down the court, now we make it in two. If it takes you 45 seconds to go this direction, we make it in 15 seconds. It's just all we're trying to do is refine the bicycle. Is part of what makes these players that you train great the fact that they're open to new ideas and criticism? Because they must have healthy egos to be the best players in the world. Um, everyone has an ego, but I don't see their ego when we come into a gym. Um, it is a place where it's completely transparent, where they're vulnerable, where they make mistakes, and there's no criticism. They share with me something that falls second in their life between, behind God, family, and their health, and that's their game. And I hold it in tremendous reverence. And I don't ever get an attitude, I don't get an ego, I don't get issues, I don't get problems. So all this crap that everyone talks about them, I never see it. And they don't care that you're an ex-lawyer, you never played in the league, you never really played in college. Um, let me put it this way. People want to think that these guys aren't smart. These guys are some of the smartest people in the world. To be able to live your dream and make the king's ransom while doing it, you've lived in the American dream. You're pretty damn smart. And these guys can smell magic beans in about five seconds. So if you're going to walk into a gym and they smell magic beans, you're out of that gym. So it's very important I come in there with my gospel. They believe me. They trust me. They see what I've done. And instantaneously, they see there's a difference. And how'd you get that level of clientele? Is it all word of mouth? Um, I don't solicit business. I don't have business cards. I rely on things growing organically. It's a world of a lot of mistrust. So if you're going to be the snake oil salesman, they'll know it right away. So I hope that with every player that I worked with, I did my best. And then that work product showed. So if Carmelo played great, other people are like, wow, Carmelo's playing great. Why? And this is how my business has grown. I've never solicited anything. Do you think that's transferable to the corner office, other places of work? Um, absolutely. I think I think what I have done definitely reflects well on Wall Street because the idea to me is all about client services. Because if you're at Goldman Sachs private client group and you have a top level guy, you know what? Then you need to understand him. You need to respect him. You need to like know him. You have to give you know value him. You have to give him all your time. And I think that this level of client services applies to many industries. Guy or girl? Because you're training WNBA stars now. How? Do you know who you can make great? Because you're right now working with the best. Can you turn even a mid-level player in the NBA into the next Kevin Durant? I don't know. I mean, I, I can't make that assessment until I actually get to know who that person is. I think, uh, everyone, I think everyone has a potential to be something. It's just I don't necessarily know what that something is. right? So I think everyone can hit the moon. It's just I don't know what moon you're going to hit. So before I say I think you're going to be great, I really have to sit down with you, understand you, talk to you, understand what your goals are. And then together we work together to see if we can meet that goal. So finally, you've had some enthralling NBA playoff series so far, a lot of Game 7s. Who's going to win it all? Um, you know, this is always a tough question for me because I have players in each team. So for me, if Chris Paul and Blake Griffin score 100 points, then I'm happy. If Kevin Durant scores 100 points, I'm happy. If LeBron and D. Wade score 100 points, I'm happy. If Trevor Reza scores 100 points, I'm happy. So I'm rooting for my guys, not necessarily the teams. Well, I hope you're happy about a great book, The Hoops Whisperer. Thanks for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. And thank you for watching The Street.